I'm glad that God chose us because here's the deal. So my, one of my biggest battles in, in life is why would God choose me? <laughs> why would God choose a mess like me? Why would God choose a man who's messed up? Y'all, y'all, y'all look good today. I, I'm just telling you, let me preach to Brian in the day. Why would God choose somebody like me who's messed up, <laughs> scars, wounds, hurt? Why would God want to choose somebody, let's, let's make this personal, like you? Let, let's make this personal today. Why would God, think about this, it's powerful. Why would God want to choose you? Now, that right there, when you can look at yourself and say, God chose me. And when you can say that, that, that right there is a pattern called freedom. That when you can say, man, warts, wounds, scars, <laughs> bad attitude, all the stuff, the junk in my trunk. When God, when you can look at yourself and say, God chose me, that has set you free right there. And watch this, you ready? Nobody can't do anything about it either. That's what I love about it. Nobody can't do anything about it that God chose you. I love that. I love that. Hallelujah. See, and God didn't choose me because of me. He chose me because of him. And so today what I want to do, I, I want to give you a, um, a word that God downloaded in my spirit. It feels good in here today. Spirit's good in here today, man. I love that. It feels good in this house. Last week I preached, why did God choose Mary? We're calling this the why series. Because one, one of the greatest things, I hear, I hear this all the time. Why, 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 why? Why, why, why is this? Why did this happen? Why no? If you're listening, you'll never ask that why again. So why did God choose Mary? Last week I preached about it. So this week what I want to do, I want to go really quick, deep into this word. Why did God choose you? Why did God choose Mary? Why did God choose you? And next Sunday, Christmas Sunday, we're going to talk, why did God choose Jesus? You don't want to miss that one. It's going to be so good. So go ahead. Let's get some practice in really quick and turn to your neighbor and say this. I'm so glad God chose you. Yeah. Now look at, look at him again. Don't, look, don't look at him with like, I'm glad God chose you. I don't believe you. Smile. Yeah. How many of y'all are thankful that God chose you to go to heaven? How many of you are thankful that God chose you to be here today? Isn't that good? I love that. God chose this. Watch this. Man didn't create Elkhorn Baptist Church. You wish. And this church ain't revolving around man. It's revolving around the man. King G. Y'all ready? Watch this. Lean in and listen. He's God all by himself. He don't need us, but he wants us. I love that about Jesus. Watch this. God actually wants me. I know some of y'all don't, but God does. God does. So I want to preach today, why did God choose you? Why did God choose you? Messed up, warts, scars, your own bad, nasty self. Why did God choose you? So I'm excited about this. Listen to this, John chapter 15, verse 16 to 17. Can I read the Bible? Can I set the foundation? And then we'll preach the word. Watch this, so good. John chapter 15, to all my note takers. Verse 16 and 17, read now the NIV. I love this, because I hear this, I miss this, this theology, is, it's, it's wrong. We think we chose God. Watch this, these first few words, John chapter 15, verse 16 and 17. You did not choose me, Woo. but I chose you. And I just didn't choose you, I appointed you. So good. Watch. So that you might go, huh? That you might go, huh? That you might go and bear fruit, uh-oh, and fruit that will last. Some of you are bearing fruit in your job. Some of y'all are bearing fruit in a temporary situation. I'm asking you, are you bearing eternal fruit? Fruit that's going to last forever and ever and ever and ever. I'm just telling you, it's so good. God says, I, I, I saved you. I chose you. I appointed you. That you would just sit still, be still, never talk about me, never give me praise. Just sit on your hands. I could preach all by myself on this one. Fruit that will last. And so that whatever, uh-oh, Willie. 
<laughs> this messes all Christians up right here. This messes uh, the, the people, the, the, the religious people up. So that whatever, whatever means whatever, you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Yeah, that was so good. Whatever, I don't care what y'all say, I'm sticking with the word of God. I don't understand it, but I believe it. Watch, he says, whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. This is my command. This is my command. If you want the fruit, you gotta do one thing. You gotta love each. All this bull crap. Oh, I'm sorry. Going around, I'm sorry. Look, no, I'm not. I'm not apologizing for this. I'm so sick of this stuff. I, I love Jesus, but I don't love you. All the murder and the killing. People, people at church. This side can't get along with that side, and this side can't get along with that side. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like you, but I don't have to love you. Watch this. It is not a suggestion. God says if you are a child of God. You have to love, watch this, you may not like me, but you gotta love me. Hey, I love you too, boo. Ah, God is love. Look at your neighbor and say, I love you no matter how you look today. <laughs> oh, it's gonna get good in here today. Woo, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. He says, this is a suggestion from God. He said, no, 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 this is a command. This is a command. Y'all don't look at me like that. This is a command. Love each other. Some of y'all want the fruit, but you ain't got no root. So, <laughs> some of you guys, man, you, you, you have led a title. You have let a denomination, you have let this world get up in your head. And God says the number one thing, the evidence, I feel the Holy Ghost. The evidence that you are truly a child of God is the love factor. It's the love factor. It's how you love. It's how you love. Nobody don't care how much of the alphabet you got in front of your name. Nobody don't care how much education you got. Watch this. I know people that's smart that's dumb. <laughs> ignorant. Ignorant. A bunch of ignorant. Let me go on Ephesians chapter 1. I love preaching here, man. Because listen, y'all can take a lick and keep on ticking. It's just time. It's just time. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 and 5. Here we go. Here we go. For he chose us in him. For he chose us, we didn't choose him, for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. Here's the love word, in love. He chose us, I love this, for adoption, to be sons and daughters through Christ Jesus in accordance with his, what, pleasure and will. Watch this, this blew me away, Willie. God, when God created me while I was yet in my mother's womb, he said, I created you with pleasure. <laughs> I created you because I love you. I created you while you was yet in your, I see here, here's the deal. Some of you look at your life and you don't even love yourself. God says, if you, well, hallelujah. If you love him, you'll love yourself. If you love him, you'll love your neighbor. If you love him, let me go really crazy on y'all. You'll love your enemy. Yeah, if you love him, you won't only give him your coat, you'll give him your cloak. If you love him, you'll go visit people in jail. If you love him, you'll wash somebody's feet. If you love him, you'll be faithful to him. You see what I'm saying? Here's what the America, the United States has done. We have become so inwardly about us, we have forgotten about him. God says, if you love me, you'll love them. Y'all see, the, see the flow? Watch this, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But you are a chosen people. I love this. Look at your neighbor and say, you're chosen. Yeah, you're chosen. You're chosen. Watch this. Not only are you chosen, he said, you are a royal priesthood. Watch this, you are a holy nation. Well, I don't believe God's up on America. I'm, I, I, read the Bible. God's special 
people, I love this. In one translation it says, you're handpicked. Oh my God. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness, I feel the Holy Ghost, into his wonderful light. I've got something to tell the world. I've got, I've got the, the greatest name above all other names. I've got to share Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ. So if, you, if he's in you, watch this. If he's truly in you, 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 can't, you, got, you got to tell somebody. You've you got to tell somebody. Church, I want this to get deep, deep, deep down in your spirits this morning. One of the greatest decisions that Brian Rafferty, Brian Rafferty has ever made is when I finally, truly believed that I was chosen by God. Now, we, we, we throw that word out loosely. Loosely. I'm, I'm chosen. I'm a vessel. I'm a royal priesthood. I am a holy nation. You know 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But are you leaving, li living 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9? Listen to this. I, I know that don't sound deep that you were chosen by God. But listen to this. This gets me excited. God's crazy about me. God loves me. Y'all see what I'm saying? He loves me so much. It's crazy. When I was preparing this this week, he loves me so much. He's numbered the hairs on my head. Numbered. This is crazy. He has numbered the hairs on my head. So in other words, this is crazy. His way, his way I think his way. I got to preach his way. I study. If one of my hairs gets caught in a comb and the comb pulls one hair out, God says, oh, Rafferty lost a numbered hair. He lost 15,450 hair. He, uh, he numbered my hair. He knows the hair that is on my head. And that may not mean a lot to you, but until you start losing hair in a comb, He, well, y'all look at me. I want this to get in y'all's spirit so much. This sermon got me so happy. Got me so excited because if God is for me, I am the head and I am not the. <laughs> I'm gonna have fun this morning. It's so real. He's numbered the hairs. Well, Brian, where's that at? Matthew chapter 10, read it later. It's so good. He knew me while I was yet in my mother's womb. He set me up to be a prophet to all nations. If God be for me, who can be against me? If God, I'm, I'm telling y'all, it gets me excited because why? I am chosen by God and man can't do anything about it. I love that. Nobody, watch. Nobody can stop what God is doing in me. And God, listen, nobody can stop what God's doing in you. And I'm gonna give y'all some keys today. And I'm excited about this because I believe what I'm preaching. I believe that. There's no one else like you. When God created you, he threw the patent away. I want you to go ahead and practice with me. Look at your neighbor and say, well, God did good when he created you. God did real good when he created you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did so good. He did so good. You say, Brian, when I look in the mirror, you should say, I see Jesus. I see Jesus. See, we always point out things that are, that are about us. But when God looks at you, he says, that's my child. They're precious. I created them. How many of you know God don't make junk? God don't make no junk. Y'all remember, remember King David in 1 Samuel, help me out, Holy Ghost. 1 Samuel chapter 16. I love when God's speaking. Let's let, let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Y'all remember, remember David? He wasn't the king at that time. But Samuel went to Jesse's house. Jesse was... Help me out. David's father, I'm working, I'm working. God's helped me. Y'all remember Samuel showed up and he says, I'm here to anoint, to set the next king of Israel aside today. And so Jesse got all of his boys except one. He put seven big, strong, handsome, good-looking king material in front, of, in front of Samuel. Samuel got the horn of oil. He was anointing them. And he said, oh, that one's not it. No, that one's not it. No, that one's not it. No, that one. He gets to Joey. I mean, David, he gets to, yeah, y'all help me. <laughs> yeah. He gets to Mark. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to put your name up in this stuff. Because that's the way I learned the Bible. And I love this. In your Bible, and I'm going to read this to you. He says these words to Jesse. God, listen, has not chosen these. Do you have another one? Do you, is, there, is this all the boys you got? 
He says, no, I got, I got one more. Y'all know the story, good vacation Bible school story. And he says, but he's, he's out there, he's got a harp. He's, he's skinny. And he, he's ruddy. Read your Bible, it's so good, it's a good story. And he said, he's out there, he's singing to the sheep. Why would you want him? He says, just go get him. That's your last one. Some, just go get him. And the Bible says that Samuel took the horn of oil, horn of oil, six quarts of oil, and poured it on him. And he said these words, and I, I quote, this is the one, hallelujah, this is the one that the Lord has chosen. This is the one, the Lord, I'm telling you today, you are the one that God has chosen. Hallelujah. You are the one that God has chosen. Everybody else can be anointed, but I'm anointed by heaven. Y'all hear what I'm saying today? I believe this. Listen, the Bible's got to become, it's got to get off your shelf. It's got to become, you've got to become a chapter in the book. You've got to become the 29th chapter of Acts. You've got to become the 67th book. You've got to blow the dust off your Bible and say, man, I know God, all my life I've been taught this, but now I want to know this. Listen to this, so good. See, here's what God spoke into my heart. Most people looked at David as a shepherd, but God looked at him as his king. God looked at David as a king. Here's what blessed me so much when I was studying this. Everybody else looked at him and says, man, all he does is play with the sheep and sing to the sheep. I mean, all he does is sit under a juniper tree and he grabs a harp and he plays the harp and he just sings. But God says, no, no, no. He's more than a worship leader. He's a king. And I'm telling somebody here today, and I feel this fire in my bones today. You have been looking at the wrong person in the mirror. I see some kings in here today. I see some queens in here today. I see some men and women of God that needs to stand up and take the authority of God back in your life. Watch this, God anointed you. He has chosen you. Does that get y'all fired up what? I don't know, Brian. You just don't know me. Quit looking at your messed up self. God did not create you and say, oops. Matter of fact, God, God don't even know the word oops. He, he don't stand up on a Sunday morning and say, oops, I forgot about that one. No, no, no. Listen, here's what God told me too. God knows how to bring you in. Some of you feel like I'm just in a field. I don't have much going on in my life. Everybody else is anointed. Everybody else is on the stage. Everybody else has got a calling. Everybody else is doing something. I'm telling y'all today under the unction of God, God knows how to call you in from the field. God knows how to call you in. God knows how to set you up for your miracle. I just wonder, I thought about this too. What if David says, no, all my seven brothers, are, they're, they're in there, man. They're, they're better kings than I am. Oh, man, they can sing better than I can. They can play the harp better than I can. They can do this better than I can. He would have missed his king opportunity. There's a lot of you sitting under my teaching today. God's called you. You know you're called. And if you're not careful, you're going to look at your circumstances. I feel the Holy Ghost. You're going to look at people. You're going to look at other things in your life. And you're going to remain still. And you're not going to be kinged. You're going to miss it. I'm calling pastors forward today. I'm calling deacons forward today. I'm calling men and women of God forward today. And I king you. Hallelujah. King you, king you, king you, king you, king. There's a king inside of you. There's a king inside of you. There's a king inside of you. I need somebody in this place to believe what I'm preaching today and give God praise. There is a king in this house. His name is King Jesus. He is king does. He's king does. Let me go deeper, man. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were, were chosen. <laughs> Isaiah and Ezekiel were chosen. I wrote this in my notes. <laughs> I, I got it right here if y'all want to see it after. Peter, James, and John were chosen. Bobby Walker, I got this right here. I, it's my sermon. I can preach it. He's chosen. I got it right here. Courtney Waldrich. Chosen, hallelujah. Mike Tiger, chosen. All the men at the healing place, you're chosen. 
Willie Bland, I got your name here. You're chosen by God. Terry Eastman, you're chosen by God. Y'all will just always have church till you get in your mind. I am chosen by God to be here today. I am chosen by God to be a worshiper. I am chosen by God to change this generation. I refuse to let anybody die and go to hell from South Central. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. Hallelujah. I thought about this too. Why did God choose us? Why did God choose us? Y'all ready? What did we do? What did we do to be chosen by God? Have you ever thought about that? Why did God choose us? What, what did I do to be chosen by God? It's not that you're wonderful. It's not that you're sinless. Y'all know y'all got junk up in y'all's trunk. Watch. Y'all ready for this? Why did God choose you? Why did God choose Why did we get chosen by God? Y'all ready? We didn't do anything. This is crazy. You didn't do anything to deserve God choosing you. Y'all understand that you did not do anything. God did not choose me based on my, me being a pastor. No, no, he already knew that. God chose me, watch this, and we don't deserve it. Y'all know that. We didn't do anything to get it, to earn it. We can't buy it. Y'all know y'all can't buy this. God chose us because he loves us. He loves us. He loves us. So why did God choose you? Why did God choose you? Why did God choose you? I'm going to give you, I promise you, it's going to be quick. Everybody say, you're right. Number one, why did God choose you? Take, take these notes, because I promise you, one of the biggest battles I hear every day, why, why did God love me? Why did God choose me? I don't, listen, number one, to be the voice of heaven here on earth. Now, God could stand on a cloud. God, God can stand on a cloud, open his mouth, and the whole world, because he, they, he, they could hear that he is God. He, he could do whatever he wants to do. He could take a donkey and make a donkey talk. He could do whatever he wants to do, but watch, God chose you. God chose me to be the voice of heaven here on earth. Y'all, listen, we need some John the Baptist moments back in churches. Yeah, we need some John the Baptist. John, the Bible says, was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And John had one message that was the pattern of John the Baptist all through his life. Y'all want to hear it? It's, it's really special. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. Boy, you don't hear it in churches no more, do you? Boy, you, you, don't hear, you don't hear stuff like that. But here's one thing we all had to know in common. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven. I'm, I'm being a voice. I'm being like John the Baptist today. I want to be, I want to preach to you. Repent. Jesus Christ is coming back. Jesus Christ is coming back. It could be today. Do you know him? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Listen, don't let that go in this ear and out that ear. It's got to stop here. There's got to be a repentance. And that's what John, he said, you are my voice. You are the forerunner. You are declaring this is the way of the Lord that repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God chose us to be his voice here on earth. How many of y'all believe that? Watch. How many of y'all truly believe that you are the voice of heaven here on earth? You better watch what comes out of it then. You are the voice of heaven here on earth, my little grandson's two years old. And man, I'm having some really good God moments with him now. I like him little, but I like him when they say I'm wet and I need my diaper changed, I'm hungry. Y'all know what, mama, if you're a parent here, you know what I'm talking about. You want them to be a little bit older where they can talk to you. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so Walker's at the house. And I realize I get one chance with Walker. I get one chance to be in his B-pop. So when Walker's at the house, we're now teaching Walker how to pray. And this is beautiful. Now, he's still got the, the speaking in tongues baby language. You know what I'm talking about? That's not speaking in tongues for my interpreters. But Dana walked in there, and, he, and Walker, he was just going to town with his food. Going to town, going to town, going to town. And Dana was like, time out, Walker. No, 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 no. We pray first, and so help me. Two years old. Two. And he don't know what he's doing. Bull butter. Oh, he knows where the cookie jar is at? Yeah. 
Now, he's skipping the bathroom. <laughs> but he, he knows. That baby laid the chicken tender down. Come on, somebody. I'm y'all, making y'all hungry now, Baptist. He laid it down. He went. Hands went up. Hands went up. And I love this. We just didn't stop there and say, oh, goo, 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 God, God, it's so sweet, Walker. No, we said, pray, boy. Now, I don't know what he was saying. Neither is Dana. And she's grandma. She's me, me. He went, oh, my son, boy, boy, boy. I got to be really careful right here. I got to be, <laughs> I'll go up and, yeah. I got, so he started doing that baby stuff. And when he was done, I knew this word, Amen. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying with all of us. We are the voice of heaven here on earth. We should be the voice. When someone looks at us, we should be the voice. We should be the voice of heaven here on earth. Number two, to plunder hell and to populate heaven. Now, I want y'all to lean in and listen. Number two, why did God choose us? Why did God choose us? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 25 that Jesus did not create hell. Only reason why he created hell was for Satan and his angels. Read it. Hell was not created for mankind. I don't care what the Southern Baptists say. I don't care what the Calvinists say. I'm telling y'all today, when Jesus Christ died on that cross, you was on his mind. You were on his mind. Listen, in Elkhorn, we're not a sanctuary for the saved. I'm preaching. We're a hospital for the sick. Yeah, we're not a church. We're not a sanctuary for the saved people. This is not a country club. This is not a country club. We are a hospital for the sick. I wrote this down. Everyone is welcome at Elkhorn. Everybody. Everybody with their addictions, they're welcome, hallelujah. With their problems, they're welcome. With their issues, they're welcome. With their troubled marriage, they're welcome. With their singleness, they're, they're welcome. I'm preaching good. With their messed up family and their messed up self, you are welcome at Elkhorn Baptist Church. We are a sanctuary. We, we're here for the sick. All we are is one beggar telling another beggar where to find the bread. Well, I'm full. Well, help me then. <laughs> Nobody goes to hell. And I, that's going to be my, when I, get, when I stand before God, I promise you, God's not going to say, how much money did you bring with you, Rafferty? He owns that. The one thing that God gave free will to is mankind. It's mankind. It's mankind. Nobody goes to hell in South Central. Church people are funny because here's the biggest thing I, I, I get asked here. Oh, when are you going to do the Revelation study? I guess when we get Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John down. <laughs> what's, what's, what's that? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent. It's time, it's time to go back to the basics, really. Everybody's worried about the end times, and God's saying, you're still living. Everybody's worried about when Jesus is going to come back. It could be today, but watch this. Have you done anything today to show him how much you love him? Oh, number three, I'm almost done. To be the hope of glory here on earth. The voice, to plunder hell, to populate heaven, to be the hope of glory here on earth. I want y'all to lean in and listen because this is, this is my heartbeat as your pastor. And I, th- I know I'm at the right, right, right church. Listen, God chose us to be his hope here on earth. Lean in and listen to this. Don't ever give up on people. Y'all hear me? Don't ever give up on people. If they're breathing, there is hope. And God says we are the hope for the hopeless. That's what God said. Don't give up on your sons. Don't give up on your daughters. Don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your relationship. Don't give up on that drug addict. <laughs> don't, don't give up on that alcoholic. Don't give up on that abusive situation. I'm telling y'all, there is hope. If you're breathing, there is hope. Isn't it sad? You got to preach to a church. 
Don't give up on people. What if Jesus was on that cross? He looked down, people spit on him. The Bible says 600 people walked by and spit on him. They put a, they put a crown of thorns on his head, a spear in his side, tried to break his legs, but that didn't happen. The Bible says in Isaiah, they beat him so bad he was unrecognizable. You couldn't even recognize Jesus. He was beat so bad. And you're telling me to settle down? When people are lost and dying and going to hell, this week alone, I knew five people that died. Five. Five people. And one of them was a year younger than I am, and I'm 49. Death does not come with an age. Watch. Don't wait till you're on your deathbed to try to wake up to praise him. While you got breath in your lungs, praise him. I'm just telling y'all, this is one thing that the devil hates is when people come together, touching and agreeing, and say, I know it don't look too good, but I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm hallelujah. Don't give up. Look at your neighbor and say, don't give up. Yeah. Don't you dare give up. When people look at your life, my prayer through this, especially this Christmas season, we went to the mall the other day, and I wish we didn't go to the mall. You'll find out what your relationship with Jesus Christ is like. Yeah, somebody, you, you put your blinker on. Here's what, y'all listen. I got to talk. I, I, I need healing right now. You have your blinker on, going into a parking spot, and some joker, child of God, will come around. And I'm like, no, you didn't. I'm putting, put a Medea. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's crazy. You'll find out what your relationship's like with Jesus Christ. Yeah. You, how, how many of y'all know that's good preaching right there? Yeah. You, you sure will. But we are the hope. Y'all know, know where this sermon comes from. <laughs> I get mine through nature. You know what I'm saying? Number four. Y'all ready? Number four. I'm almost finished the second time. To be fruitful and love one another. Please lean in. To be fruitful and love one another. How many of you know according to God's love, that love, again, is not a choice. It's a command. No matter how you treat me or how I were to treat you, watch. You got to love. It's not a choice. It's not. Y'all know one common thing that we all got in common right now? Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody knows what's wrong with the church. Everybody knows what's wrong with your family. Everybody knows what's wrong with you. But what I'm saying is this. Isn't it crazy if you were to look at somebody and say, listen, I know you got stuff going on. But how can I pray for you? How can I help you carry that burden? How can I make your load lighter? How can I help you get out of the ditch? How can I love you today? That is a language that this world needs to hear again. We need the fruit of love back in South Central. We need the fruit of love back in the church. We need the fruit of love. And God says, listen, if you want to be fruitful, love one another. So let's go ahead and practice. I wrote this in my note. This is so good. I want us to practice. So I want you to look at your neighbor. And I want you to say, the only reason I love you it's because I have to. I'm joking. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Y'all smile. Good God. It's okay. See, I used to think you had to go. If you went to church, you could not. You got to sit still. You can't move. You got to be a, a robot. Yeah. Watch, it is okay. How many of y'all know we serve a happy God? I didn't tell y'all this. How many of you know God is looking down today and saying, you know what? I know they cray cray, but I love them anyway. No, let's be for real, man. Listen, go ahead and look at your neighbor for real this time, all right? Say, God loves you and so do I. Come on. God loves you and so do I. God loves you and so do I. Yeah. God loves you. God loves you, Elkhorn. Facebook family, God loves you. Watch this. I know y'all ain't gonna like preaching like this, but God loves the mass murder in the state penitentiary. God loves them. 
God loves Muslims. You know, we, I'm so glad that love is not based on how we love. I'm so thankful that love is based on how he loves. Because we got temporary loves. If something don't go right in a marriage, see ya. Uh-oh, that's another one. So the last reason I want to, I, I personally believe why God chose us, and this is powerful, and I want you, this is it. Praise team, you guys come because I won't stop. The last reason. I believe God chose us, and to me, this is the icing on the cake. And I want you to think about this. He didn't want to be alone. He did not want to be alone. Now, I know this goes totally against a lot of theology, but you can't prove it wrong in the Bible. Think about this. I want you to think about God chose me. God chose you because, what? hallelujah, he did not want to spend eternity alone. He did not want to spend a moment without us. I just think God loves us. And I know there's theology out there. Listen to me, lean in. Well, God just created me to worship him. No. Y'all look, no. God created you to spend eternity, hallelujah, with you. Are y'all getting this this morning? He... He wants to spend not just a thousand years with you, not just 10,000 years with you. He wants to spend eternity with you. Somebody give God praise in this house. Isn't that good? That is so good. <laughs> I, I want to I close with this. It's a true story. This is a true story about a man named Jim. Is the praise team coming? Come on, guys. They don't believe me either. <laughs> Greg's up there. He gave one foot on and said, oh, goes back, you know. This is a true story about a man named Jim. Everybody say Jim. Yeah. Jim was adopted. And Jim had two older sisters. And one day, the middle sister said to Jim, dad and mom love you more than they love me and Julie. And without hesitation... Jim said, you're right. You're exactly right. Of course you're right. They, of course they love me more than they love you and Julie. <laughs> he said, they had to take you, but they chose me. <laughs> yes, oh, Glenn, that's so good. That's <laughs> so good. And I thought about this. I said, Wow. As crazy as that sounds, that's so true to us here today. God don't have to have us. He chose us. It's made my spirit leap. I remember we, we adopted Destiny. I remember the day that they sent us her picture. I was at Liberty Baptist Church in Russell Springs. I was their pastor. And Dana sent a picture of a, a beautiful little girl, Destiny Lee Shane Rafferty. And I was sitting there, and even though I was not her biological father, and it's okay, we talk very honest, we're very honest with destiny. When I seen her eyes, and I seen that black hair, and I seen that picture pop up on that screen, Christine, I didn't have to sit and say, let me pray. I, I didn't have to sit there and say, is there another one? I knew that I knew that I knew at that moment, that little girl who was thousands of miles away in China, that I was about to get on a plane and fly from the United States over to China to pick her up. But as soon as they put her in my arms, I fell in love. I'm just telling y'all today through this adoption stuff, it's crazy that sound about Jim and Julie, their talk. The Bible says we're adopted into his family. God handpicked you. God chose you. God don't have to have us, but God wants us. Why does God want us? He wants us to be his voice here on earth. God wants us to plunder hell and to populate heaven. God wants somebody to look at your life and say, you know what? They give me hope. They give me hope that God is real.
God didn't want to be alone. And we got to love one another. So today, right now, wherever you're at, you may be here and you may be lost as the day is long. Why did God choose you? Because he did not want to spend eternity without you. It blessed my heart. That above all of the reasons that I could have gave y'all today, when I thought about them, when God downloaded me, Brian, I want you for eternity. And listen to me, there's two places. Whether y'all believe this or not, I'm sticking with the Bible. There's two places called eternity. That's either heaven or that's either hell. Y'all look at me. Don't, don't wait till you're on your deathbed to say, well, I think I will. Watch this. John chapter 6 in your Bible says that God has to woo you. God has to pull you. We got a lot of emotional people. But listen to me very carefully. God chose you and God chose me to spend eternity with him in heaven. Let me ask you a question. Do you know him? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord? Not because your mama, not because your daddy, not because you're a Baptist, not because you got good bloodline. Do you know Jesus? Come on. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Don't say, if you sit there and go like this, let's look, let's, let's quit the little church games. If you sit there and go, oh God, I, I hope so. No, 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 no. I don't have a hope so gospel. I got a no so gospel. I know that I know that I know. I'm not perfect, but I've been chosen. Hallelujah. Ha, I got junk in my life. I make tons of mistakes, but God loves me. He chose me. He's appointed me. And watch this. I'm a king. Well, you, I don't care which, I'm a king. And I'm just telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, why did God choose you to be his voice, to be his hope, to plunder hell and to populate heaven, to be a soul winner, to be fruitful and love one another, and watch this, to spend eternity with you. Isn't it precious that when God created you, he said, that's eternal. That's eternal. Jackson, you're eternal. Watch. I'm telling you, I believe the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Could be today. And don't bank on you're going to get three score in 10 years. Don't, don't bank. Don't bank that you're going to get 70 years to live. Gary, you can testify. That don't, don't, don't get, don't. I'm telling you, a young man full of health. As a matter of fact, Brother Gary's not even supposed to be here today. But God chose you to be here today. Somebody give God praise. God chose. Here's what I'm saying. God chose you. I don't want y'all to get inside your spirit. God chose you. Look at your neighbor one more time and say, God chose you. Come on, God chose you. Tell somebody, God chose you. My question, do y'all believe he chose you? Because if you believe he chose you, there'll be a heavenly response in your life. There'll be a heavenly response in your life. If y'all would, stand to your feet. How many of y'all are thankful this morning that God, listen, that God has adopted you into his family? Come on. Come on. That God has adopted me and God has adopted you into his family. I don't want y'all to ever question why God chose you. You got purpose. You're here on purpose. There's a reason. Not because it's church. God is bigger than a steeple house. God chose you. So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I pray I preach this word the way you gave it to me. I pray to God that Lord, somebody got this today. So often we look at the mess, but God, we are the message. So often to God, we look at the storm, but God, I know the storm chaser. God, I praise you and thank you, Lord, for moments like this, because without a shadow of a doubt, no matter what man may say, people may say, we are chosen 
by God. So Lord, today, we want to say Merry Christmas. Today, dear God, we want to say we love you. And thank you for choosing us. You didn't have to. But God, you just didn't want us for 70 years. God, you wanted us for eternity. So God, those who are watching by Facebook, website, wherever they may be, let them feel the Spirit of God today that I am a chosen vessel. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer believing somebody's going to get born again here today, God. Be glorified in Jesus' name. And all God's people said.